Hey there, mama friend, and welcome to the 5-Minute Mom Podcast, where we'll talk about real life, real faith, real fast. For today's show notes or to get free Monday mom devotionals, visit audrahaney.com. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. I am so grateful that you guys continue to tune in. I can't believe we are already on episode 24, and I have just been blown away by your support and encouragement. So thank you so much for sending messages and telling me which episodes you've loved and what's connected with you. That means the world to me. So please never hesitate to reach out. Um, I love hearing how God is meeting you through the podcast. So thank you for that. And we've got some great holiday conversations content coming your way soon. We have an amazing interview with Becky Kaiser later this week with ideas for young families on how to keep the holidays holy and some financial interviews for this time of year when our budgets get stretched thin and some great resources to help you thrive in the new year. But today I want to talk about Halloween and I know this can be a really divisive topic in the church and I even hesitate to go here. But the first thing I do want to say is take what works for you or what you feel like is wisdom from God that is fitting for your family and chunk the rest (laughs) if it doesn't work. But either way, I did want to talk about it because as a new mom, I struggled so much with Halloween and what to do and where to put the holiday. So I was constantly searching and talking to other moms about what they felt was right. And I've always been much more of an intuitive person than maybe a perceptive person. So I'm really sensitive, especially when it comes to spiritual things or the feelings of a certain environment or atmospheres. And that goes for the good and the bad. So I really loathe any kind of horror movie or witchcraft or dark dark television show or depressing or angry music, anything like that. So the darkness of Halloween especially when it came to parenting, was really something I didn't want to deal with. However, when I did look back on my childhood, it was a fond memory. And it was something that was actually really fun for our young family when we did participate in a respectful way. So here's some quick points about why our family does decide to participate in Halloween in our neighborhood. So the first is we got to know our new neighbors so well on Halloween night, especially after moving our neighbors right across the street literally did not speak to us or wave back when taking out the trash when we first came into the neighborhood. But on Halloween of last year, my adorable tooth fairy and her tooth sister (laughs) knocked on the door and melted their hearts. And since then, we have become closer and we've been able to walk with them through the grief of losing a family member. And we celebrated with them as they celebrated their 50th anniversary. It's just a great excuse to go knock on doors and get to know your neighbors and or hand out candy without being super awkward. It's also a great opportunity to talk to your kids about the reality of spiritual things, that there is dark and there's light. And even if they're really little, if you do things in an age-appropriate way, you'll be surprised at what their spiritually sensitive hearts can understand, sometimes better than our own. So we don't allow in our family to demonic or dark costumes in our family. And that can also be a good conversation starter about what your family stands for. And it's a great time to talk about the covering and the protection and the power of the cross and walk out and actually believe what you are teaching them. And third, the origins of Halloween are actually really interesting. So you might want to begin to teach your children about All Saints Day during this time as well. I don't have time to cover it here, but you can do a quick Google search and kind of incorporate that as you teach your children when the timing is right. Fourth, we have to remember that there are really evil things happening on Halloween night and on other nights. But here's a few scripture verses I'd like for you to remember. 
1 John 4, 4 says, You are from God, little children, and you have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. John 1, 5 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Matthew 5, 14 through 15 says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they set it on a lamp stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And the Bible actually teaches that at the name and presence of Jesus, demons flee and they tremble and they are afraid at his authority and power. It's not like a boxing match where people are evenly paired up. Jesus is so much stronger and greater and has infinitely more authority. What better time than Halloween to prayer walk your street or to pray for the lost and to exercise your spiritual authority? If bad things are happening on the street, isn't that more the reason to be out and interceding for our neighborhood? We have a real hope in Christ, so we don't have to glorify or celebrate the darkness, but we also don't have to cower down and act afraid. Be wise this Halloween, be discerning, don't put yourself in bad situations, but also be bold and exercise your spiritual authority and go be the light. So that's the end of our five minutes. Please tune in again soon. If you want to learn more about me or sign up for the podcast newsletter or get a free devotional, visit audrahaney.com. And if you enjoyed this, would you please leave a quick review? Reviews are so important for podcasters, and it helps more moms find us. It would be a great blessing.